したか。ワン、ツー、スリー、ファーイエースプーニープレイヤーズ、ロビッド here。Almost 60 years ago, Gegege no Kitaro popularized the notion of yokai in Japan in the form of a manga series. While there are obvious influences felt in Yokai Watch, there's a true crossover present in the recent Yokai Watch Shadow Side movie. Now we've got the related Puni event, and thankfully, since the manga has an international version, I have some easily pronounceable, if not strange, localized names to give you. We've got a Gegege no Kitaro collab gasha, and for the beginning of the event, both Kitaro Nyan and Kitaro are raid up. Both of these characters will help with various aspects of the event. And now for one of the longest intro notices I've seen it's the Gegege no Kitaro dream match. I'll walk you through it, but a dream match is a modification of what we typically think of as a Budokai tournament in Puni Puni. You can get a ton of new yokai through the Gasha, Y Point Shop, and as rewards. The top new yokai is Kitaro Reawoken, a new SSS rank. In order to get Kitaro Reawoken, you'll need his Awoken SS form, the Spirit Antenna item, and to fuse them together. Like in Budokai, we have a random encounter in Possible Stage that can appear after you've beaten a round of the tournament. This time we actually have two of them. Ratman Awoken and Wiso Toko. Both are SS ranks. As usual, these are hard battles and there are event yokai that can help out. When battling either impossible stage, Daddy Eyeball Awoken will provide a large defense boost and Kitaro Nyan will provide a medium boost. Against Wiso Toko, Ratman Awoken provides an attack boost, and against Ratman Awoken, Wiso Toko provides an attack boost. Just like a Budokai, one of the prime goals of the tournament is to collect pieces of treasure that unlock rewards. Treasure can be dropped after defeating enemies or by stealing from other players. If you're participating in stealing, there's a chance time that can give you a big boost sometimes after completing a tournament round. You can get Yokodori tickets needed for stealing as end of round tournament rewards through the Y Point shop and with real money. While stealing, several yokai have bonuses. Kitaro Awoken has a large bonus and good chance of receiving that bonus. Cat Chick S has a large bonus but only a medium chance of receiving the bonus. Amaterasu from the last Budokai has both a medium bonus and a medium chance to receive the bonus. During the tournament, you'll receive Y points for each battle you successfully complete. There are a variety of rewards available to purchase at the Y Point Shop, including event yokai and exclusive items. During battles, using Kitaro Reawoken will give a large bonus to Y Points. Using Kitaro Awoken will give a medium bonus to Y Points. In all tournament battles, Kitaro's S rank form will give an attack bonus. Rolo Cloth and Wally Wall's S rank forms give a defense bonus. While participating in the tournament, there's a leaderboard based on the number of tournament rounds you've completed. There are a variety of rewards, including Kitaro Reawoken, depending on your rank in the tournament. As part of this event, there are three new items. The vest is like an Ultra Soul secret. It will advance your yokai one full level, including directly from level 6 to level 7. The wooden clogs provide a 30 minute boost to Y Point collection. The Cracked Bowl of Liquid is a Super X Orb. You can purchase these items in the Y Point Shop or randomly receive them as end of round tournament rewards. During the tournament, you'll see some enemies with the Dream Match symbol of a D with a lightning bolt superimposed on their yokai. If you battle those yokai within the tournament, there will be a requirement shown for the battle. The requirement is always a specific yokai you need to use. If you successfully defeat the enemy with the required yokai, you win the dream match and you'll receive a specific reward. You can only succeed at each dream match once, and there are 15 in total. Additionally, there are rewards for completing a certain number of dream matches, including special books, yokai, and the spirit antenna. In order to get the spirit antenna, you need to have completed all 15 matches. You can then use it to fuse with Kitaro Awoken and make Kitaro Reawoken. All of the yokai needed are listed, along with where you can get them. 
Most of the low-level yokai are gathered through normal map stages in the game. Another chunk of them come from the Y Point shop, and the last group are befriendable through the impossible stages and as treasure rewards. First up, let's hit the Clab Gosha and drop mad Y Points in the hope of getting those sweet sweet event yokai. G Manhattan and Last Bushinyan passes are available. Kataro Nyan and Kataro Awoken are the two main SS ranks, but Chakorina is another great yokai. Kataro's S rank and Cat Chick are next on our list, along with a bunch of past event exclusives. In the A ranks, it's Rolo Cloth and Daddy Eyeball that we're looking for. After all those other A ranks, there are two B rank event yokai with the Sandwich and Wally Wall. At the very end, there are two collab icons available for your profile pick. Here we go. We're doing 10 cranks at a time, and right away one of the profile picks comes up, but it's the last red capsule that's most interesting. It's the Sandwich. The Sandwich is a mysterious B rank all stunner. The next 10 crank is a bust. Moving on. We've got another one. It's Daddy Eyeball. Daddy Eyeball is a heartful A rank healer. Not too long after, it's Wally Wall. Wally Wall is a tough B rank popper. And another. It's Kataro Nyan. Kataro Nyan is a charming SS rank single attacker and summoner. His skill allows his ultimate gauge to fill up as he receives damage. We're on somewhat of a roll. It's Rollo Cloth. Rolo Cloth is a mysterious A-rank single attacker. Unfortunately, none of the gold capsules yield new yokai. We make quick work of another 29 capsules with nothing new. The 30th is a gold capsule. Out pops Kitaro. Kataro is a brave S rank popper. This is when things take a turn for the desperate. It's not 10 cranks, not 20, not 30, not 40, not 50, not even 60. Not 70. Not 80. Nor 90 cranks. But 97 cranks and another new yokai. It's the one. Kataro Awoken. Kataro Awoken is a brave SS rank single attacker. His skill is to start with his ultimate gauge partially filled. Buckle up, it's event go time. After the talky part, we get to the instructions which are going to look awfully familiar to you if you've watched my Budokai videos or played the events. I'll cover how it all works in a moment, but it all ends with an important question. Stealing mode or not? Tap the green button. Just do it. That's non-stealing mode. Now that we've done that, we're on to the tournament. Since this isn't a Budokai, but rather a dream match event, it's not run by Enma. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same, although the dream match is at a new element. 
Each round of the tournament is a battle, just like elsewhere in the game. Early in the tournament, they're super easy, and as you progress through more and more rounds, they become more difficult. If you win the battle, you progress one step through the ladder. Each tournament round has five steps in the ladder to win the round. If you lose a battle, you'll have to start the round over. There's no real problem with losing a round, except that you won't get the end of round rewards and your round won't advance. Advancing rounds is how you earn better rewards and more Y points, as well as climb the tournament leaderboard. If need be, you can reset the round by tapping on Whisper. It's during my second battle in the ladder when I get my first dream match. In this case, the battle is against Daddy Eyeball and we need to bring the E rank Ake. To get Ake, we have to go to the Y point shop. You'll find the usual assortment of bonuses, event yokai, yokodori tickets, items, and the new exclusive items in the point shop. Each reward costs a certain amount of Y points and is only accessible at a certain round of the tournament, another reason not to fail rounds. Unfortunately, Ake is only available after round 3, so we're out of luck. If you tap on Ratman and his pile of treasure, you can see all of the dream matches, the requirements, and the rewards. Since I don't have Ake, I just start the round as normal. It asks me if I want to proceed since I don't have the requirements of the dream match, and I say yes with the yellow button. Otherwise, you can hit the purple no button and go back and change your yokai. Playing a dream match without the required yokai means you can't get the reward, but you still advance through the tournament normally. Each battle you play has a chance of dropping a treasure item. There are four major rewards, often referred to as seals, because you need to get each one of eight colors of treasure items to unlock the major reward. You can also steal these from other players, but that's generally not done at lower levels because they're easy enough to obtain through drops. The bummer is that you can receive the same color of the item multiple times, so it's possible to get duplicates. It's the penultimate battle of the first round when I run into my second dream match. This time the battle is against Kitaro and the requirement is Jibanyan, so it's no problem. Again, the match is played just like normal, the difficulty isn't varied at all, I just have to have Jibanyan on my team. Once the battle is complete, I'm given my first dream match reward, 100 Y points. That also means that I won't see the combination of a Jibanyan requirement and Kitaro again. That takes me to my final battle of the round. The difficulty at this stage in the tournament is super easy, so players of all abilities and advancement in the game should have no problem. In addition to event yokai, the battles in the tournament generally take place with previous bosses from maps, events, and score attack. As the tournament gets more difficult, bosses with special attacks and requirements come into play, as do tribe restrictions. The one tribe that can participate in every battle of the Dream Match tournament is Mysterious. Once the battle is done, Ratman gives us a little pep talk, and we're given a reward. Early on, the rewards aren't great, but they can be considerable later on. Now it's rinse and repeat forever until we get everything we need. I get two more easy dream matches, first with Hungrams, then with No Way. As a result of successfully completing three dream matches, I'm also given an additional reward with an exclusive event yokai. The rewards show up in the inbox, so that's where we go to find So Sorry. So Sorry is a mysterious D rank healer. Another dream match is here, and it requires the newly received So Sorry. After that, it's Tattletail against the Sandwich. At this point, it's pretty surprising that I haven't gotten a single treasure drop. Usually I get one during the first round, but I'm already through to the third round. It's perhaps fitting then that after I destroy the sandwich with Extreme Venok, I get my first drop. The first seal is Ratman, and we need to gather all eight colors of his treasure. 
Next up is the dream match between Whisper and Ratman. Whisper was available during the Whisper Ohajiki, but he's also in the Y Point shop if you don't have him. As a result of beating 6 dream matches, the reward is a soul secret. More battles and two additional colors of the treasure are acquired. The Ake dream match shows up again, and this time we're far enough along to buy him in the Y Point shop. Ake is a mysterious D-ranked ball popper. A few more tournament rounds pass by, and it's finally time for one of the random encounter impossible stages to show up. You're always asked if you want to battle the impossible stage. Just say yes. Worst case, you lose a spirit and learn just how tough they can be. In this tournament, the impossible stages are also dream matches. The requirement for each impossible stage is the Okai from the other impossible stage, so we're not going to be able to beat that one for a while. We can still play the stage normally though, and try and befriend Wisotoko. Wisotoko is a no continue stage, tribe restricted to brave, charming, heartful, and slippery. Since I've got Extreme Blizzaria, that's my go to for charming, although there are a ton of great charming yokai. I'm bringing a ton of boosters as well as the charming Kitaro Nyan. Kitaro Nyan gets a defense bonus in both of the impossible stage battles. Wisotoko has 70,000 hit points, does 635 damage every 3 seconds, and likes ice cream. It looks like he doesn't do any kind of special attack during the main part of the battle, which is awesome. With Kitaro Nyan, it looks like damage is cut down to only 444, which gives us time to get Sultimates up and get into Fever. After I launch Mole Man, my combination attack and defense booster, Wisotoko launches a full counter attack. Cut down by both Mole Man and Kitaronyan, it only does 92 damage, but it looks like it partially drains Sultimates. I've got Fubuki-chan in waiting, so I pop in and use her Sultimate right away. Next is Kitaronyan, and with two boosters looks like he does 20,000 damage. I've saved Extreme Blizzaria for last, and she's going to bring the hurt big time. Well, she would if I executed her Sultimate well. Some ice cream and... That's one long-awaited battle, and no befriending. Keep in mind that if you restart the impossible stage before succeeding or being defeated, you can try it again, so if you don't think you're going to make it, restarting might be your best bet. For now, it's a bunch more treasure bags toward the seal when Ratman Awoken shows up. He's the other impossible stage and dream match. Like Wisotoko, there are no continues and he's tribe restricted to brave, charming, heartful, and slippery. Ratman Awoken has 76,000 hit points and does 701 damage each 3 seconds. Kitaro Nyan cuts that down to 490 damage. Unlike Wisotoko, Ratman Awoken's normal attacks also include a Sultimate frame, so I'm trying not to pop my big puny unless I have to. This is causing me to go slower than I want, however, as I don't have much to pick from. My hit points are getting too low. Time to restart. Same strategy this time, just have to go faster. That means I'm going to have to pop some of these big puny, but I'll just have to pop small ones to make up for it later. The good news is it seems like he's the reverse of Wisotoko in normal battle, and he's also the reverse in Fever. No Sultimate drains. He does have a pretty wicked counterattack though, 294 even with Mole Man and Kitaro Nyan. This time I'm able to use all three attack boosters and Kitaro Nyan does a solid 60,000 damage. He's got just a tiny sliver of hit points left so I feed him and use Extreme Blizzaria. I probably should have just spammed the board because his counterattack with no Mole Man is 550, and before Blizzaria's ultimate finishes, he does another attack, and I'm dead. Ah, that was ridiculously close. Back to gathering treasure bags for a little bit, and then Wisotoko's back. Come on, come on, come on, nope. Dream match between Kataro Awoken and Kataro Nyan pops up. That I can do. Ooh, then it's Old Man Crybaby versus Hungramps. Off to the point shop for us. 
Old Man Crybaby is a heartful B-rank pauper. Oops, I turned off my video recorder by mistake. Played for a while, got the last treasure bag, and here's Ratman. Ratman is a slippery A-rank all-stunner. Although the drops were slower than usual for the first round, not too many duplicates. 14 total treasure bags, or 6 duplicates. Wisotoko is back and... Nope. The next seal is for a soul secrets and I've got my first item. Ratman Awoken is back and... Yes, it's a treasure item. Another dream match, this time Ratman vs Whisper, which I can now do having unlocked the first seal. More grinding, more pages of the soul secrets. Wisotoko is back again! Seriously, another blue Soul Secrets page? After more battles, I managed the last one. Yay, it's a Soul Secrets. Moving on. The next dream match is Rollocloth Awoken. I'm already past the 25th round of the tournament, so I can get him. It, from the point shop. Rollocloth Awoken is a mysterious s rank single attacker. The next and third seal is for Wally Wall Awoken. We need to find all his trowels, you know, to make a wall. It's Wisotoko again! Nope. Getting those trowels though. What, what? Now Ratman Awoken is back. Oh yeah, that's what's up. Ratman Awoken is a slippery SS rank link popper like Princess Speech. His skill is to make it easier to connect his yokai. It's the double threat, Wiso Toko is back, and it's a dream match between him and Ratman Awoken. The double threat dream match turns into the dream drop. Wisotoko is a slippery SS rank direct attacker and stunner. His skill is to do extra damage to heartful and charming yokai. That's our 12th successful dream match and that means a reward of an extreme soul secret. It's back to gathering trowels, and it takes a while. I've been playing now for one and a half days straight, with a few hours of sleep in the middle. I have 50 duplicates. 5-0. Wally Wall S is a tough S-rank popper. Now that we have WWS, we can handle the dream match against No Way. After that, it's all about collecting those old cracked tea bowls to get Daddy Eyeball Awoken, the fourth seal. This is always where it gets ridiculously difficult. Drops of fourth seal items are rare, and that makes duplicates hurt a lot. It takes five and a half hours of play before the first drop. During the next two and a half hours, I get five unique items. It's going really well. Then it's another seven hours before I get my next item, a duplicate, and another 15 minutes later. An hour after that, I get my sixth unique item, and two more duplicates in the next 45 minutes. Then I go to sleep. I wake up, and I play all day. 17 hours. No drops. 
I have no idea what's going on. It's time to Yoko Dori. This is when it gets real. Like real real. Like I don't care if you're Robit or Chiro or whomever. Yoko Dori ruins lives. People's heads fall off. Cats fall in love with dogs. And the oceans fill with hot dogs. It's just... crazy. I've changed my mode to Yokodori, and that's irreversible. From now on, I can steal from other players, and they can steal from me. I've got my super OP Enma team, and I know there is no better team out there. My Enmas have a team strength of 26,988 thanks to 4 SSS ranks and Enma Awoken. This means that outside of someone getting chance time, I can't be realistically stolen from, so I feel safe. I just have to find someone that has what I need and hope they don't have the same team. I search, and search, and search, but no luck. I look at other colors I already have in case I can bank an extra, and I finally find someone. They have the same team. It's a draw, but I lose a Yokodori ticket anyhow. Searching, searching, but I can't find anyone. It's time to do something drastic. The only team that can play all the rounds of the tournament is Mysterious, so I've built a Mysterious Hunter team. It's all the highest stat Brave Yokai, along with Kataro Awoken for the Yokodori bonus. Since it's an all Brave team, it's gonna be clear that I'm not running Enmas. I just have to try. Immediately I find two teams with one of the two items I need. Let's go. Let's go. We start off fairly close, but we both have Kataro Awoken, and the other team actually gets a bigger bonus from him, perhaps because I haven't used any soul secrets on him. I lose by 500. I try again and find two more. Let's go. This time I'm the only one with a bonus. That gives me the jump, despite starting slightly behind. Beyond that, he or she has Mysterious Yokai on their team, and I'm getting a tribe bonus of over a thousand every time my Brave matches up with them. I lose some with Kataro Awoken going up against Extreme Venok, but I'm still ahead. Another tribe bonus, and I end up winning by over 2,000. Let's go. My adrenaline is flowing like crazy, so I go back and put my Enma OP team back on so I can relax a minute. No good. I lost two T-Bowls while I had my Brave team on. At least one of them was Dark Blue, which I had the most duplicates of. I'm back to missing two, including Yellow, which will end up being the bane of my existence. I immediately find another team. And it's an identical OP Enma team. I simply can't find anyone for any of the colors when I have my OP Enma team selected. I finally find another, and it's identical. Another draw. I sincerely think they changed the logic so that OP Enma teams can't be used effectively. It makes sense. After all, they're simply too OP. It's time to get creative again. I try an all-mysterious team, but it's a no-go. I change back to a brave team, but this time I put Dark Enma in the center slot, changing the team's strength and preventing others from knowing if I'm running an all Enma team. It immediately yields a match. I start out 600 behind, but I've got bonus yokai, I'm all brave, and they're all mysterious. Full on Yokodori madness, can't lose. When it's all said and done, I win by 5000 points, and the orange T-Bowl is mine. I can't find any other teams, freak out a little, and change back to Enma. Now I'm only missing one, but fear and doubt are starting to creep in since I know I can only win with a non-Enma team. I've got an idea. I'll get to chance time, and then with my OP Enma team, or my Brave team, I'll take the win. I play through a whole tournament, armed with my Enma team so I can't be stolen from, just hoping that I don't run into tribe restrictions. I make it through, and Lord Enma Almighty, here's chance time. I've got four and a half minutes to make magic happen, but you can guess what happens instead. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. 
I can't find anyone. I try my other team, but no luck either. I look at backup colors, and I finally locate someone. The chance time bonus is huge, otherwise I would have no shot. And yet, I lose by a slim margin. Chance time is over. Now, even with my brave team, I can't seem to find anyone. I start looking at backup colors again, and I find a team. Thanks to the bonus and some tribe effects, I pull out a win. That's one more bowl I don't have to worry about needing if I get stolen from. I find another backup team, and this time by a very slim margin win only because of my bonus yokai. And then it happens. I find a team with the yellow bowl. The only one I still need. Let's go. Ultra Yokadori Go Time. And it's an OP Enma team. How the... I am so dead. I lose by 5,500. I'm back to searching, and searching, even for backup colors. That's when something interesting happens. I stumble upon a brave hunter team. This person has set up an all shady squad just to catch people using brave squads who are hunting mysterious squads. Well played. After all the tribe advantages play out, it does not end well for me. I lose by 6,500. I search some more, I lose a backup battle. I search some more, I hit an OP Enma team. I randomly get chance time, can't find anyone. And then I do. It's a yellow bowl. My heart is beating out of my chest. They're running Akala in the center slot, but you never know. It turns out to be a mutt tribe of tough, Enma, and brave. I start 1200 behind, but chance time puts me 1500 in front. Kataro Awoken puts me even farther in the lead. This is starting to feel good. Really good. Wait. Wait, did we just win? That's the yellow bowl, and that's Daddy Eyeball Awoken. Holy crud. Daddy Eyeball Awoken is a heartful SS rank attack booster and healer. His skill says it recovers with hot water and further increases attack power. I don't know what that means, but right now I don't really care either. We've got work to do. It's time for the last dream match, Daddy Eyeball Awoken versus Ake. We win the battle, and there it is. The reward for the last dream match, and more importantly, the reward for completing all 15 dream matches, the Spirit Antenna. We go into the fusion menu, get Kataro Awoken, get the Spirit Antenna, pay the fusion tax. There's our boy. Kataro Reawoken. Kataro Reawoken is a brave SSS rank sideways auto popper with 961 attack at max. His skill heals when big puny of his are popped. There are a few last loose ends. In the Y point shop, there's another icon you can buy. Done. You can also buy the event yokai Cat Chick. Cat Chick is a charming A-rank 2 area popper. There's also an S-rank version of Cat Chick in the collab gasha, but I couldn't pull her. Beyond all the Y points I spent early on, I cranked another 40 times until I began to feel uncomfortable about how much I was spending. I'll wait and hope there's a raid up, because I have to replace my Kataro Awoken I used to fuse as well. Cat Chick S is a charming S-rank 2 area popper. If you enjoyed the video and understand how crazy this all was, push that like button and don't let go. For exploration of every alley and dark corner of the Yokai Watch world, subscribe to me on YouTube and Twitter. Until the next video, good luck with the dream match.